Well, happy Monday, you little bottom. Happy Monday. I'm coming to San Francisco, upstate New York, Virginia, all kinds of places. And support the Patreon. You get to see some of those shows. I live stream my weekly show in New York, bonus episodes, all kinds of fun stuff. And then this week, this is, you're going to lose your f***ing mind. We have Ray Williams from Netflix's huge show, The Ultimatum. And we get into what it was like coming out on national f***ing television and her dating life since the show as a, as a bi lady. It's a great episode. I hope you like it, guys. Have a, have a nice week, you little bottom. Lister, you know, in the bedroom, I'm up to try anything once. Maybe besides, you know, a man, a cis dude. Then, then I'm not up for it. But I'm definitely up for some supplemental fun in the bedroom, and that's why I love Foria. And what's Foria? If you didn't know, Foria uses all natural and plant-based ingredients to intensify sexual pleasure and relieve discomfort, if that's a problem for you. You may have heard me talk about Foria before, but Foria is helping you get your best orgasm ever. Imagine the best sex you've ever had, now multiply it. It's even better because Foria makes products that were designed to naturally enhance sexual pleasure and give you access to bigger, better orgasms. I've tried Foria. I tried their Awaken Arousal Oil and their sex oil and it made my orgasm deeper and more powerful and fuller. It's really great stuff. I totally think you you should try it. So yes, you have my permission to try this. I fully endorse you to go ahead and treat yourself to more deeper, fuller pleasure wherever you can find it as often as possible. And you can start with a bottle of Foria. Foria is offering a special deal for our listeners, you guys. Get 20% off your first order by visiting foriawellness.com slash Ashley or use code Ashley at checkout. That's F-O-R-I-A wellness.com forward slash Ashley for 20% off your first order. I recommend trying their Awaken Arousal Oil and their Sex Oil, and you will thank me later, listener. The girl that I hooked up with, she got a new toy, and it scared me. <laughs> 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 this is so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm talking about this. But she had a toy that was like skin colored and veiny. And I was like, I can't. I can't. Where's the little pink one that we had the last time we hooked up? I can't do this one. This is weird. Why does it have balls? I'm not. I can't. <laughs> I was having an aneurysm because I was like, we're never going to get Ray again. <laughs> we are we are in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with a baby, a baby by that I'm very excited to have on the podcast today. We just did 20 minutes of trying to fix audio. <laughs> so the energy, the energy is low, but we're going to pick it back up. Yes. Give it up for star of the biggest show on Netflix. Huge show. The biggest show. No one has a show oh bigger than this one. <laughs> This show is so big. <laughs> the ultimatum on Netflix, Ray Williams, everybody. Hi, hi. Thanks for being here. Sorry about the audio problems. Oh my gosh, no, it was my fault. <laughs> but it's not your fault. It's just so silly that like that's how bad the technology is. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm sometimes I think, wow, it's amazing that we can send a little thing to Mars that takes pictures and sends it back to us and then other times i'm like our little our little f-ing computers don't work yeah what is going- <laughs> I, I got a computer in 2019 it is already like headed for the dumpster oh yeah mine mine started making not like, a laptop not a, a full laptop. blown yeah yeah a full blown yeah <laughs> yeah it's me uh tech whiz kate sisk i got a full blown computer full-blown we're not computer. talking laptop we're talking full blown computer <laughs> Um, so Ray, where are you? You're recording from mom's house. I don't know if I'm yes. allowed to say that, but how you doing? What have you, what are you getting up to? Where are you? Uh, so I'm currently in Austin, Texas. I've been living in Houston. I came back into town to host some events and I decided to stay with my mom. <laughs> are you a celebrity now? Because you, you were a human. I was saying to these guys, you were a human until like four months ago. And now yeah. you're like not a human anymore. You're like a celebrity. No, I don't. I don't really think that I'm that I'm a celebrity. I think people are just fans of the show, and I just happen to be on the show. If that makes sense. That's very mm. modest. But I have a feeling <laughs> that the gay community, uh, the gay community, is very happy. <laughs> I, I think so. I'm very happy. I went to a gay bar last night. I went to Fourth Street in Austin. Yeah, uh, they have an event called Tuesdays, and I had a really good time. Is good. it a gay bar like a 
Is it a regular bar except on Tuesday? No, it's like a strip of gay bars. Like it's oh, like have, four or five of them. You have oh, a number nice. of gay. We only have really two or three. We have one lesbian. Well, bar we have here. tons of gay bars, but lesbian bars. Yeah. There's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's only one lesbian bar in Texas. It's called Pearl Bar, and it's in Houston. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. If you guys are ever out this way and you want to check it out, I'll be coming through for shows for sure. Nice. Definitely, <laughs> okay. I'll let you know. Definitely, but we have to meet up at Pearl Bar and have a drink because that is like the spot. Please stop it because. <laughs> Kate knows whenever we have a femme on the show, I have an aneurysm. I, you, no one can hear it, but Ray is laughing right now. This Ray is enjoying this. I think any, I don't know if it's an uncomfortable laughter. I'm turning red. Whenever we have a, whenever we have a femme on the show who's nice to me, I turn into an idiot. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll go to pro bar with you. I'll go. To, I'll go to pro bar with you, Ray. <laughs> oh my god awesome. we need that on nope. the soundboard it's just me going there's a fam there's a fam <laughs> there's a fam on the podcast i'll have a drink with you <laughs> i don't drink i start drinking because no. ray asked me i got so mad at the bar last night there was this really pretty girl at the bar and i watched this other woman approach her and she turned to her and was like oh oh i'm straight i'm straight and i was kind of looking at her like okay but you're in this space yeah so I, I just, it was just the way that she went about it. Like she was saying yes. she was straight, like she was almost like offended. Right. But I'm like, you're an attractive woman at a gay bar and yeah. a woman is approaching you. Just say, no, thank you. You don't have to go on a tangent about how you're a straight woman. Yeah. Cause now I'm like irritated. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, she should know that as soon as she goes into the bar, she turns gay. That's how we get you. How does yeah. she not know? <laughs> As soon as you enter the threshold, you like just start going down on everyone. Like, <laughs> Everyone's yeah, like, oh, all, there's a newbie. We all get on our backs. And <laughs> all gay bars have that machine from science fiction movies where you go in and it sprays mist on you. But then when you come out, instead of like inoculated, you're gay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a rainbow mist. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like if you're going to be a straight person coming into a gay bar, just Come in, tip the bartender, buy some drinks, tip the drag queens, have a good time. Don't make it weird. Don't announce your straightness all over the place. Like, just come in and have a good time. You know what I mean? Stop flaunting your straight lifestyle. <laughs> Why do you have to talk about it all the time? Um, well, we're so glad that you're here. Did you get like a fuck? Well, you know what? I'm going to save it for when you tell your story because I have so many questions for you just about the ultimatum. And if you have yes. not watched the ultimatum. <laughs> You I actually have, have some go. really good news for you guys if you're not aware yet. Um, season two of The Ultimatum is a queer cast. No of, fucking way. Of women. How am I not on this show? Someone give me an ultimatum to marry them so I can get on this show. So you can get on the show. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's filmed. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to get in trouble. But um, it's an amazing cast of women and they're working on season two right now. So I really, I wonder if Netflix will want to work with me on this. Connect me to your people, right? Because I want to produce Les Island, which is Love Island. <laughs> but you divide the cast into tops and bottoms. Oh so rather God. than men and women, you have tops and bottoms. Do not well, steal intellectual property. What about the switches? Properties. What about so, the switches? So at some, you have to pick when you go in. But once a season. I couldn't do it. <laughs> but here's the thing you pick and then once a season if there's someone that you want to switch for you can switch but if they don't oh. accept your switch mm. you're kicked off the island so it's like a lot oh. it's like very high pressure <laughs> okay that's funny les island i'll have to send that idea over with you to the netflix producer well we'll, we'll cast you obviously you'll be on the first season of, Le of les island <laughs> of les island <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really hope I can make this a reality. And it takes place on Lesbos in Greece. <laughs> in Greece? That's pretty funny. You know the island Lesbos? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we would do it in Greece. Nice. But I'm so glad you're here. Go watch The Ultimatum. Follow Ray. It's Ray.Williams on Instagram and Ray, Ray Williams underscore on TikTok. What, what are you on TikTok? Oh, it's Ray Will underscore on Ray, TikTok. There we go. Ray Will on TikTok. Yeah. And we should probably. So, Ray, every time we do the show, we introduce ourselves. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we should do that. Yes. And okay. we, we do this format and just copy the format. And if you forget, I'll fill you in. I, I'm so happy we got the mic to work because I was truly I started sweating. I have stress sweat right now. Can you smell me? <laughs> I cannot. 
um uh, good and and she's so great you know sometimes you get reality people and they're not that great <laughs> really yeah well i'm trying to think about some of the people i filmed with and yeah i could see yeah <laughs> Ah! Shots you... fired. Wait, what are you about? Let's introduce ourselves and then I have a million questions. Yes. I will I'm... answer all of the questions. <laughs> Good. I'm so excited. And then, yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm thinking about Pearl Bar now. All right. So uh, I like that it's oyster themed. Is it oyster themed? No. It's oh. Not. I just feel like you're going to go and it's and you're going to have a connection. It's going to be Pearl Barber. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a um what do they call it uh the barber the the murdering barber the musical Sweeney Todd, Todd. Oh, what's a pun you could put yeah, there I don't know Virginie Todd Virginie Todd <laughs> <laughs> what's an s word for pussy there's uh, none there's none there's none that are nice yeah <laughs> anyway I'm Ashley Gavin I'm a cis gay white woman she her pronouns uh the tour is expanding i don't know what to say to you guys it's a lot Thank you, Kate. That's nice. it's pretty fucking cool i'm just so tired i can't enjoy it really i'm enjoying it but i am also very tired yes that's okay it's like a roller coaster of emotions yeah yeah that makes sense yeah i'm going to all these places and i'm trying to have fun but to perform and have fun it, it's super emotionally like mm -hmm. i'll come I'll, I'll just have a toddler day and i come home and i cry all day <laughs> toddler day. yeah i just have like a full toddler meltdown <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so the website, ashleygavin.com, katesis.com for your tour dates and your show, your, and my mailing list, on my and your mailing too. list. Did I say my pronouns and everything? Um, I'm gay. <laughs> she, her, I'm gay. She, her, I'm gay. Um, and as always, the cancel coach to keep me from getting canceled, his fist is deep inside your glove, but he hasn't caught a ball in a long time. <laughs> it's kate sisk hey everybody it's me kate sisk the cancel coach the fat in the chat uh any pronouns are fine i'm a, a white bisexual lesbian dyke i want to take a moment to explain that i've been getting some questions lately about the bisexual lesbian dyke i can I, I, I answer it fuck off <laughs> just fuck off fuck off anyone can say whatever I, the fuck they want you understand what it means you piece of shit i say it for context um, I, I, I feel like bisexual is my orientation. I want you, the listener, to know my orientation so that when you hear a story that, a throwback, a finger blast from the past where I'm talking about hooking up with a dude, the context to that is not a closeted person enduring sex with a man. It was someone who was enjoying it. I mean, it you were still time. enduring sex with a man. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not you were closeted. <laughs> <laughs> no, that it was sex that I was interested in having, you know? So I say, and, and, and to know that now, if I'm talking about how attractive a man is, I mean it. I'm not just like, oh, ob objectively, he's an attractive dude. It's and like, I don't no, I'm, mean it. I'm gay for him. If I say a man's attractive, <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, lesbian, I feel like, like is kind of, is, uh, I'm living a lesbian lifestyle. You know, I'm, I'm partnered by with, with a woman. Yeah. <laughs> I'm choosing to be a lesbian, so I'm going to hell. And I, I, <laughs> lesbian is like the lifestyle I live. It's the community that I'm in. And then I say dyke because that's kind of like you I are feel like that you're word. A huge dyke. That word is a mix of sexuality and gender. I yes. feel like, and I feel like I I sit pretty comfortably in that. You're the you're the biggest dyke set. I know. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Don't you, Ray? Can't you see Kate riding around on a motorcycle? <laughs> Maybe like a Harley. I don't know. Yeah, Ooh, I think so. Harley. I think you're a Harley guy. Yeah. But if if you're writing in being like lesbian, bisexual, on the, you need to <laughs> you need to calm the fuck down because <laughs> the bisexual plight is that you could never fully represent your sexuality unless you're like in a thruple. That's the bisexual <laughs> plight. <laughs> right. <laughs> huh. So anyway, you're allowed to say that. Yeah, you're... those are my those are my words. I've chosen them for myself, and and I am. And you can fuck off. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that, but I will say I'm I'm, I'm allowed. I'm allowed to zoom zoom. I'm allowed to give myself whatever words. Zoom zoom on the camera, Alex. Makes sense for me. Fuck off. <laughs> fuck off. Okay. <laughs> Wait, hold on. <laughs> fuck off. Oh God. Okay. Thank you, Ray, for that. <laughs> Getting through that tirade with us. <laughs> I feel like this is this is a definitely this 
moment for me because I'm like, oh, I won't respond to the DMs because I don't want to get into it with anyone. I'll just explain it politely on the show. <laughs> Next thing I know, I actually saying fuck you in the camera. Fuck you. <laughs> Anyway, everyone here for Ray is like Ray, get Ray back. What? Why are we listening to these weirdos <laughs> yell about bisexual lesbians? I don't understand what's going on. Ray, do you mind introducing yourself to everybody? Yeah, of course. Okay, uh, I'm Ray Williams. My pronouns are she, her, and I am bisexual. What an what an expert. Nice. She already knows. Do you feel <laughs> like you're now? Are people like like congratulate? What was the reception like? Because you came out in the reunion. Yes. Which was um, so just the best. <laughs> Most of it was positive, and I was honestly very relieved to get a lot of positive DMs. I also had a lot of DMs from people who have struggled with being accepted. They told me how much it meant for me to come out at the reunion, just coming off of a heterosexual dating show. They felt represented and seen the first time to yeah. have somebody who was closeted be a part of the cast and kind of show that struggle. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, I got the DMs of like, you know, Revelations 812, you're gonna burn in hell. You're setting a terrible <laughs> example. You're you gonna die. Texas. Like, yeah. Yeah. The Bible thumpers came through heavy on that one. But for the most part, it was very positive And that was a huge breath of fresh air for me. I was very relieved. Yeah. yeah. And like everyone from this, we don't deal with that because like Netflix, you're getting, you're getting everybody in the everyone. whole country. And, and multiple countries. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. So it's like we don't, in our little corner of the internet, we mostly just have 100% positivity. It's amazing. Like the people who That's listen nice. are amazing. Because well, only people who want to interact with us are interacting. <laughs> I want to hop in y'all's bubble. I want to be in that corner. I'm trying Please, to get over Ray, I would pay good money to have you hop in my bubble. <laughs> Oh my god okay i'm too much it's too much it's too much yeah and then of course you know i got all the dms from men saying i can help you i can fix you i can change you i can bring you back to the right side oh. of things i got that are you that serious well, well but i'm did so you, serious did you have did you have women sliding in in a flirtatious way yeah i got a few anyone famous <laughs> um no no one famous i did have someone who is an absolute icon in the community messaged me, but not in a flirtatious way. Mm. Okay, cool. Like That's strictly funny. on like some congratulations. I'm following yeah. you, proud of your journey. Kaylani messaged me and sent some love and support. Wow. And I lost, I lost it. I wow. was like ran around my room like five times and I sat down. I was like, okay, reply to her and don't be creepy. Don't be weird. Don't be weird. <laughs> but don't... she she saw the show and she sent her support and I was like crying and I was like, oh my God, because Kaylani is one of my celebrity crushes. So right. having her message me was insane. We'll be sure to post this clip so Kaylani knows exactly how you feel about it. <laughs> no! Her. And then, and then hopefully Kaylani will do the podcast. We would love to have to, both of you guys on the podcast. Oh my god! Just to just meet up at Pearl uh, Pearl Bar. Yeah, Let's we'll just go to Pearl, meet Bar. Up at Pearl Bar. We should though. We should do a like a gay bar meetup. Yeah, it'd be really fun. Yeah, like a meet and greet. I would so, love that. One, one, Let's just do it. One question I have: You said uh, that you know people appreciated seeing a closeted person on the show. Yes. Were you just TV closeted, or were you like closeted yeah. in every aspect a great of question. your life? Oh yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I was kind of still in the closet. So some people, I like to say I was half in, half out of the closet. I was like peeking yeah. out. So obviously the girls that I had messed with and my ex-girlfriend were very aware that I was um, you okay. know, in the closet. So, but you um, had an ex-girlfriend, like you had a full blown, yes. yeah. A full blown computer, full as they say in the industry. <laughs> When I dated my ex-girlfriend, the girl that I dated before Zay, the relationship that you see me with on the show, my family wasn't aware of her. Right. And a lot of my friends that I grew up with weren't aware of her. And I kind of kept it in a in a space like over away from all of that. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I filmed the show and then I realized, OK, this is the direction that I'm going in. So I talked to my mom and some more of my close friends, but I wasn't out on social media or just out to people in general. And then at the reunion, they asked me, who are you talking to? And I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to say it. Wow. I just I'm ready to be out. And this is the quickest way to tell everyone. Yes. And then after <laughs> it that, is a very um, fast way to come out because <laughs> I've heard about people coming out online and like in this way, like in public. Yeah. It just yeah. seems so much more efficient. <laughs> it's very efficient. Um, you know, got all the phone calls done in one day. I had to talk to my dad. <laughs> 
<laughs> had to talk to my dad when the reunion came out. Um, I had to talk to my grandma. I had to talk to a lot of family members that weren't aware. For the most part, it was positive. I have lost touch with two family members, but mm, aside from that, sorry. everybody else has been supportive. That's I good. think I think they'll come around. It takes time, but most. I hear for the most part, people come around. Sometimes it can take a year or two, but hopefully they'll come around because it just seems like such a misplaced amount of energy, you know? I agree. I only want people in my life right now who are going to be 100% supportive. I'm not waiting on someone to come around for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I will say, so my, you know, my, I think my dad was like pretty surprised and hesitant and he came around, which was nice. But there was also I didn't I never came out to my grandmother because I had seen her hold grudges over way stupider shit. (laughs) I was like, uh, she's still in a feud. (laughs) Gretchen owes me a Tupperware (laughs) from 1972. Exactly. exactly. (laughs) You know, she's in a feud about who purchased the Mother's Day cake instead of acknowledging the fact that they all came over to visit. (laughs) <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trust her to come around with this. <laughs> yeah. Like some people are just built with with grudge muscles. I feel like a grudge <laughs> muscle is different than a homophobic muscle though. Maybe. I do. <laughs> grudge feels like more of a personality defect. Mm. Whereas homophobia well, whatever. Let's get into it. I <laughs> I have two I'm gonna tell a story, Ray. I'm gonna give you two options. Okay. I I went to Nashville for a show. And there was a girl working the bar at my hotel that I was like, oh, <laughs> that I was like, OK. And then I went on a date last night with a with a finance, a finance queen. So these are both fun stories and you can pick which one. I bartended my way through college. I want to hear about the bartender story. Yes. OK. Oh, I'm so relieved. So I hear this you want to hear this too. Yeah. This is a saga. So I'm going to try a and saga. make this as quick <laughs> as humanly possible. So I get to my hotel and shout out Urban Cowboy in Nashville. Thank you for the stay. It was awesome. Really cool boutique hotel. They may not want this shout out. So I'm going to find out if they want it. Yeah, it sounds like the staff was very accommodating. <laughs> <laughs> the room service was the best I'd ever had. <laughs> Talk about bringing something up on a silver platter. I didn't know you could bend your body that way. Um, Six out of nine stars. It was was absolutely six out of nine. Um, No, actually, you'll hear the story, and everyone was super fucking professional, unfortunately. And well, well, you'll hear, you'll hear. You can decide. Okay. So I get there, I see this girl, and you know when you meet someone and you're like, oh, you're gay. Yes. (laughs) Even if they're femme, you're like, you're gay. You have gay energy. There's just something gay about her so i walked in i saw this girl um, she's the gayest energy very femme but the gay energy and i was just like i love you <laughs> immediately immediately i was like i love you and i'm you will be my wife and <laughs> i you know talked with her a little bit and i told her i was a comedian and i was doing the thing i was like oh i'll get her comps you know i'll i'll like try and impress her yeah you know but she was busy that night she was like oh I'm working the bar tonight. I can't go to your show. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I'll just talk to you when I get back from the show. So I go up to my room. It's an old boutique hotel. So it has its quirks. Yeah. And I like the quirks. This is why I'm not sure if they're going to want this in here. Gotcha, gotcha. I don't mind the quirks. But one of the quirks is that the steam in my shower set off the fire alarm. <laughs> Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's an old shower with a really beautiful old <laughs> handle. But I so can't. So the water set off the fire alarm. So mm-hmm. yeah, the water set off the fire alarm, and I couldn't turn the water off. It was really a reverse <laughs> fire situation. <laughs> reverse fire. Um. So I put on my robe and I ran down with my wet hair mm-hmm. into the lobby. Yeah. And there's a girl, and I'm like, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> I'm in my robe and everything. And I yeah. say to the general manager, I go, I'm so sorry, but the steam set off the fire alarm and I can't turn off the shower. <laughs> and um, she was like, oh, you know, let me. Have-. So accommodating. But then the girl says to me, and I'm trying to figure out if she's gay. You mm-hmm. know, I don't know whether or not she likes me. Mm-hmm. The girl says to me, well, you look great. And I was like, <laughs> fun. I'm fucking in. <laughs> I don't know if you feel the 
sexual tension that I <laughs> felt, but you know, you're in a robe. Yeah. And I'm never the one in the robe. <laughs> I'm never the one in the robe. <laughs> I'm the one being like, oh, I'll fix the shower. I oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. I'm the handyman in the dichotomy of robe lady dichotomy. and hand. The dichotomy of robe and handyman. <laughs> On the gender spectrum from robe lady to handyman, <laughs> I'm more handy. I don't know. How do you perceive me, Ray? What do you think? I would say handyman, but you were in the lobby in your robe, so I'm going to go with robe lady. <laughs> All right. I'm robe lady. Today, my gender, my gender of the day was robe lady. Yeah. Right. I'm femme. I'm clutching my, ah, uh, who can help me <laughs> with my fire, my reverse fire. <laughs> my reverse, my reverse. Have you ever tried reverse fire? <laughs> <laughs> so... She says, I look really good. And I'm like, I'm in. I'm in. And then I do my show. It's a fun show. Uh, some people bring me cookies after the show. Nice. It was really sweet. Yeah. Shout out uh, Lily and... Oh, fuck. I got to get the other girl's name. Fuck. Shit. <laughs> Lily and friend for the cookies. <laughs> and they invite me to Lipstick Lounge, the gay bar. Fun. So I go to Lipstick Lounge. Nice. And then I figure, I'm going to bring two of these cookies home nice for my girl at the bar classy move thank you Good i call. walk thank you chocolate chip i walk back the bar is closed oh yeah that's a hotel bar for you i feel like they always close early yeah so postponed yeah now i'm getting antsy and i'm like i want to know more about her <laughs> so i start stalking on the internet oh my god how did you find her i knew her first name and i knew the general manager of the hotel so I went through the general manager's friends and I found her. Is this that we? Is that that weird, Ray? Have you done that? I don't want to admit if I've done that, but I'm definitely <laughs> aware of Instagram creeping. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's perfectly. You've never done that. I guess you're I with Chelsea, that, so you've well, never like I felt the. I've I've, uh, gosh, there was some. Well, I'll tell us. I'll tell a story about that later. Online reconnaissance is necessary. It's always necessary, yes. and I'm glad that I did it because. She's dating this little twink. She's married to this little twinky guy. What? Yes. So that's the gay energy you were picking up on. Yes, she is this twinky little that she tops her husband. She tops her husband for sure. Mm. Mm. So did you eat the cookies? I did. I ate the in cookies despair. alone in a bathtub. I went into the bathtub. <laughs> you went into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> but then <gasps> then <gasps> I'm going through her Instagram the next Polly. day. Polly. Right. This is what everyone's saying to me because I'm posting about this on my Instagram. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have no shame. What do you find what, the next day? What you go through and you find what? So everyone's like, oh, maybe she's Polly. Maybe it's open. Don't lose hope. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So then I go through the Instagram. She's following a lesbian podcast and she follows like queer hashtags. So I think by wife energy, right? I don't know about you, but yeah. Why else would you? So now I have my last chance to like do something with her. Okay. So the next morning I'm like trying to figure out if she's, this is a very difficult position to be a stranger and be like, hey, I've stalked the fuck out of you. I know you're married, but also I know you might be bisexual. You've at least thought, like, what do you, what's the opening line for that? What do you think? I don't know. Mark. Yeah, there isn't one. So I just go, someone else walks into the room, a third employee that I've met. Everyone seems so queer. And I just go, is everyone who works here queer? Oh, my God. And, and? the answer was a hard no. Uh, from her directly? The, the answer was, that's such a compliment. That's like what we're going for. <laughs> that's but what we're, here, here at this hotel, our branding is we're all queer. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly queer. Yeah. Sorry, Ray. You, you said what? But, but we cut you off. Uh oh, I just think this is hilarious. Yeah, it just was like so, but she didn't answer. She wasn't like, mm. which means it's probably not an open relationship. Right. She didn't give me anything. Yeah. So I went fucking home, dude. Yeah. Like I got on a flight. Yeah. I, I'm leaving I, on a jet plane. Ate two cookies now. <laughs> I'm feeling sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that is my not gay sex from this week sad it is sad it is yeah it's definitely i think it's also oh yeah no i really put a lot of effort in 
cookies, <laughs> stalking. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, let's go to Ray. Yes. Listener, don't forget to support the Patreon. Patreon.com slash WHGS. That's how we pay Alex. He is a full-time employee of the podcast. We could not pay him on ads alone. That's how we pay Kate. And of course, me also. This is full-time work. So please consider going and donating. And in return for those donations, you get bonus episodes. You get comped tickets when I'm in your city um, you get extended, unfiltered, uncut episodes, um, weekly access to my Zoom stream of my show in New York, and lots of other stuff. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Listener, do not miss me when I'm in your city. I know you miss my TikToks and my Instagram posts, and sometimes you skip podcast episodes. I'm only in town once a year, so let me text you once a year when I'm in town. Or I can email you ashleygavin.com. There's going to be 25 cities on this tour. Don't miss your city. Listener, maybe you want to mix things up in the bedroom a little bit. Maybe you hauled a little too fast, and now things are getting a little bit stale. Or maybe things are amazing but you want to make them even better. Can I just recommend to you, listener, Foria? What's Foria? Foria uses all natural and plant-based ingredients to intensify sexual pleasure and relieve discomfort. It has a serious cult following with tens of thousands of people who've had their sex lives transformed through using their products. Here's a real testimonial. My wife and I use the sex oil and awaken. And when she gets on top, we both come so hard that we see sounds and hear colors. Okay. That is quite the endorsement. And I can speak for myself, from my own personal experience, using the awaken arousal oil and the sex oil made my orgasms fuller and more powerful. Now you might be thinking, what is an arousal oil? Awaken is like a juicy warm-up that helps you get really turned on, increasing your pleasure and deepening your orgasms with a partner or solo. Used together, Foria's Awaken Arousal Oil and Sex Oil are the perfect combination for peak pleasure. So yes, you have my permission to try this. I fully endorse you to go ahead and treat yourself to deeper, more fuller pleasure wherever you can find it as often as possible. And you can start with a bottle of Foria. Foria is offering a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order by visiting foriawellness.com slash Ashley or use code Ashley at checkout. That's F-O-R-I-A wellness.com forward slash Ashley for 20% off your first order. I recommend their Awaken Arousal Oil and Sex Oil. You will thank me later, listener. Ray, did you have gay sex this week? I did. That's great. Congratulations. <laughs> and thank you for sharing with us. Yeah, you were saying you went to a gay bar. Yeah, no. Um, the the girl that I hooked up with, I I knew her outside of the like bar scene. We went to the gay bar just like all as friends. Okay, Fun. cool. They were friends. They were roommates. <laughs> they were roommates. <laughs> So are you dating someone now? Like what is, cause you were dating someone when you were on the right. reunion. Yes. So her and I, it was so funny. We're both kind of coming out of really toxic relationships. And then we got together and she's very private. And I told her, Hey, I kind of have this little project coming out. And she was like, what do you mean? And I was like, it, it's a TV show with my ex. And she was like, that sounds like nothing I want to be a part of. Yeah. So we been it casual. I've been, you know, respecting her privacy, but we still hang out here and there, and we talked about uh, revisiting things at the end of the summer after she's had some more time to heal. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. But um, I hooked up with her last week, and she got a new toy, and oh. it scared me. <laughs> <laughs> was was it a reverse fire? I don't know what that is. Oh, the reverse fire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a shower a shower head is not a bad toy. I've never done it. it. Showerhead's cool. No, it was, I don't know what's wrong with me. Like, I think I like, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I can't believe I'm talking about this. But she <laughs> That's had a the show. toy that was like skin colored and veiny. And I was like, I can't, <laughs> I can't. Where's the little pink one that we had the last time we hooked up? I can't do this one. This is weird. Why does it have balls? I'm not, I can't. I, I took it and I was like, this is not what I came here for. I came here for something else. I don't need this. I was like, we can't use it. She was like, oh, I just bought this. Let's, I said, I'm sorry, use it on yourself. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny because like like i'm like the gayest person that i know mm. and <laughs> as a as like a strict like a pretty strict lesbian <laughs> that's only really experienced vulvas mm -hmm. for me my fear with it's an irrational fear 
I, I want to say before the listener freaks out about what I'm about to say, this comes from the the yucky part of my brain. But my big fear is that I'm not because I don't have a penis. I'm not providing. Mm. So it, what what this person wants, which I know is unhealthy and not true. Not but true. It's, yeah. But from your perspective, it's so funny because you're saying like, yeah, I, I can have that. <laughs> yes. But I would much rather have the pink polka dotted striped little. Yes. <laughs> you know fake one without like, the fake balls attached i can do without the fake balls like i don't i just don't need that <laughs> i think straight women like, might I, say I ordered that i ordered chinese food tonight i do not need a spaghetti and meatballs like <laughs> <laughs> right exactly you want something different do you enjoy toys generally and this just visually freak you out i don't i don't we don't use toys every time it's kind of like a maybe like every like four or five times you're keeping the data she's got a spreadsheet <laughs> like just us two being together i feel like we like throw a toy in like when we're drunk or like just for fun it's not like an every time thing yeah i like to just be with her like body to body like i don't always need the we don't need the plastic like it's not necessary yeah. i think that's the most common misconception because i'm sure there's gonna be a lot of like questioning and straight people listening to this episode i think that the, that is such a common misconception about lesbian or vulva to vulva queer sex that you need this other thing yeah you, know? you don't but, but also there are people who enjoy it too and that's of course yeah and i mean a reverse on 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 the on the reverse side of this fire i uh <laughs> there, i think that there's a conception that straight sex does not have a toy involved and i think there's a lot ah. more straight people using a toy than you would think that's fair and also 100%. like yeah and also probably foreplay stuff too there are probably straight couples that do a ton of more foreplay than we give them credit for. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> it's going a little too far. <laughs> you so on the show, you were with a very masculine guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your face just said so much. <laughs> like Jake to me seems more like the type of guy that would be into a lesbian. Yeah, the funny thing about Jake is outside of April, all of Jake's long-term girlfriends were actually bisexual. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that at all. At all. He yeah. has that type of guy energy that's not uncomfortable with a woman who will top him or be more dominant. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't, I don't know about all that, but he's definitely <laughs> very comfortable. So wait, you were dating. So Zay must have known that you were bisexual. Zay and I, um, we actually met in college and he was aware that I had dated a girl before him. So he was pretty cool about it. But he, I can't imagine, he's just like such a dude, you know? He is such a dude. <laughs> so do you feel like your type on like when you're dating men versus when you're dating women is like very different or do you tend to go for more masculine people? I think it's weird because, um, you know, all my, my male exes, have been masculine and then all of my feminine exes were femme yeah yeah so and femme for femme dating is not for the week let me tell you it is a struggle. <laughs> i was struggling i was fighting for my life but no um i i've typically dated more feminine women but being with jake um because jake is very masculine in, in his own sense but he's not like that like grr type of masculine no the way he's that, like, not Zay is and I realized throughout the show I was like okay that's the type of man that I need if I'm going to continue to allow men to be in my life in that way and that's just how I am in general like if I was to end up married to a man or to ever date men again I refuse to date a man who is not 100% accepting of the community because if we were to end up married and having kids I'm not raising my kids in an environment where the man is teaching them to not be accepting of that community or to invalidate my bisexuality or anything of that. So what you're saying is so important. Wait, I want to go to the femme for femme is not for the weak because that, <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's a struggle. It is hard. Why? Okay. First of all, <laughs> have you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> feminine, being a, a feminine woman in the lesbian dating scene coming out of the closet, first things first, immediately I was attacked by so many couples, not attacked, but like, <laughs> they're like, unicorn, threesome? Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Me, us three. Oh, I like you, but can my boyfriend watch? And I was like, no, I want a girlfriend. Yeah. And then, you know, just dating other, you know, feminine women and bisexual women. I felt like I was competing with like masculine women who I felt like were probably better in bed than me. And then also men competing for the same women. I felt yeah. insecure. Um, and it was hard. And it's just hard to find other femmes who are interested in femmes as well. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Cause I, I don't know where I fall, but I, everyone tells me something different, but I, I feel that sort of competition with men. That's like, not, re- it's not real is the thing. Like we feel it, but it's not, it's not actually real. Like you just said, like yourself, you're like, you don't, you don't want the veiny dildo. (laughs) Like you're not actually in competition with these people, you know? It's like, it's the patriarchy in your brain, I think. Mm. Yeah. And also it's me just being newer to the community. I get, I was so nervous at first. I just wanted to make sure that I was good in bed with women like I was anxious to learn I was excited to learn but I was really insecure at first and shy and then finally I was like I'm just gonna have fun with it I'm just gonna practice I'm just gonna have fun and I've had really great experiences yeah yeah and I'll say last night I went on a date and this girl said to me and I'll come back to this in another episode she was like oh I'm just really nervous I think people think from the podcast that like I have like some insane body count (laughs) I think people are like she slept with thousands of women (laughs) And I really haven't. You're just like some sort of like pussy monster just slaying women across the country. Like just <laughs> like with this like Spartan body count. Like <laughs> I'm like wielding a dildo. And you're, you're, you're not you're not a pussy monster. You're literally a cookie monster bringing cookies to a bartender who has a husband. <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm, I, what I am is a simp monster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, we will. I got you cookies. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think people think that about me and I'm really not. And when she said to me, she was like, oh, I'm just so nervous mm-hmm. that I won't be good in bed. I know I'm good with in bed with men, but I don't know if I'll be in good bed, with, good in bed with women. Yes. And, and I was like, you do not have to worry about that because in my mind, every single time you sleep with a woman, you're both learning each other's bodies. Yes. And it's so it's like, there's no such thing as being good in bed across the board with women. Maybe with men, I don't know how dicks work, but like <laughs> with women, it is a new level every time. <laughs> in your little pussy video game. In my pussy video <laughs> game. No two I levels think, look the same. I think the biggest thing is just enthusiasm, just being present, being excited, being happy to be in bed with someone. And that goes for both genders. I think that's the biggest thing. It's not about having like a skill set necessarily it's about having the right energy you know yeah it's not what's on your linkedin profile (laughs) and you don't have to be endorsed (laughs) no i agree like enthusiasm like having someone who's excited to be in bed with you is everything it's just like so nice yeah like oh my god that's that's the best well let's go to what's ray do you mind if we go to kate's story for the week yeah of course And thank you, Ray, for sharing. That was all very vulnerable and private. And thank you for calling me a pussy monster. I'm going to have that written on my gravestone. Here lies Ashley Gavin, the pussy monster. Nom, 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 nom. I can't believe we've never done that. P is for pussy. Oh, my God. That's good enough for me. Ray hates this. I just totally obliterated any chance that I had. P is for Pearl Bar. (laughs) Kate, did you have gay sex this week? No, my my sweet, sweet Chelsea was away from me. Aw. And I almost broke. <laughs> I could not do it. And mind you, I am someone who was in a long distance relationship with her, including at points international. Yeah. For years and years and years. And then, I don't know, we were together for like, all of quarantine and then the extended pandemic we've only been apart from each other a day here two days there and a whole week fucking slaughtered me yeah i could not do it yeah isn't that crazy well what do you mean like you just missed her i just like i i couldn't i just like wasn't functioning in the way that i had been functioning like when she was there like i wasn't excited to get up in the morning i stayed up too late at night Mm. like i i didn't make like lovely meals like i usually put a lot of care into my meals for i'm gonna pause you for a second and tell ray that (laughs) kate struggles with their gender doesn't necessarily know what they are (laughs) 
But okay. you regressing into an unhealthy person because your wife <laughs> left for a week, I think, is further evidence that there is no question that you are a man. Uh. Race. Ray's kind of agreeing with me right now. But it's not because it's not because she takes care of me like mommy. It was like also because she wasn't there for me to take care of. Yes, of course. You know? Yeah. It wasn't totally like I am I am mommy list mommy boy. Like, mommy are you my mommy? <laughs> yeah. Are you my mommy? <laughs> She's gone for two seconds. You're and like, I wasn't enjoying it. Yeah. I wasn't like, oh yeah, potato chips and my feet up on the table and poke them around in my belly button like i wasn't like yeah this this that's, week's for me and that's what i'm doing all the time as a single this is as a single mask time. i'm just picking up my belly button lids. <laughs> but, it was it was just like sad i was just like uh oh, yeah i feel listless well when you have the responsibilities of a partner you know what i mean like it gives yeah. you a regiment yes. that you follow are yeah. you a relationship person ray do you think I think so. I think after being on the show, I just need a second, but I, I think yeah. I'm still the person. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you were on like the most relationship heavy because you're in two serious relationships on the show. Like you do. It was your- so gross. It was a shit show. <laughs> Over it. Can I follow up yes. on that? I don't want to interrupt no, you. Let's... Why? Why was it gross? Just the whole process was so annoying and draining and we had to talk about feelings 24 yes. seven and I had to date all these men for like a week and a half and then I had to pick one and then I had to go back to my original guy and he was upset at me and it was just the whole thing. I was like over it. I was emotionally <laughs> tapped out. Yeah, it definitely was that scene at the table. This is what I wanted to ask you actually. That scene at the table where you had the two impromptu engagements was one of the craziest things I've ever seen on television. <laughs> like, yeah. that was nuts. Also, Colby is a narcissist, and someone needs to help Madeline get out of that situation, in my opinion. <laughs> what, you don't think so? Really? I didn't, I saw that take. It's so weird seeing all these, you know, takes on social media about the cast and, like, who's a narcissist and who's this and who's that because – I know them in person, so it's hard for me to see them in that way. Mm. You didn't find him to be narcissistic? Well, no, I, I didn't really get to date Colby that much. I'm glad. <laughs> so I can't really um, speak to that. Um, but yeah, my dates with Colby were nice, the ones that I went on. But him and I didn't get too far in the dating process. Yeah, maybe he's maybe he's not, and I'm giving him a hard time. But <laughs> I think he's a narcissist on a personal level. You know, they say level. the camera adds ten pounds of narcissism <laughs> Up to your brain. It, <laughs> adds, it adds ten pounds to your head. <laughs> um, sorry that I cut you off. I just really wanted no, to hear her take on that. So, what happened when your wife came home? Oh, it was so good to see her. My dog freaked out. Turns out he was also uh, <laughs> like <laughs> aimless and 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 sad without her. He fucking flipped the fuck out. He was so excited to see her. He was standing at the window and he could see her and he jumped off the window so with such force that he broke the heater. The heater like came off of the wall and then oh he, like, he like ran Your to house. the back door. And <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> That one I know how to fix. His house is just so, falling apart. <laughs> he gets to the back door and he's just like jumping on her and licking her. And she like has to eventually just like sit on the floor while he just like absolutely freaks out and like loves on her. And it was so cute. That's really cute. Um, And then so she was away for work. But at the end of her time there, she took a couple days off with her grandparents. And um, she told me this goes back to your Insta stalking thing. Her her grandparents are like they're following her queer grandmother. podcasts. No, no, on it's Instagram. even more intense than that. Her grandmother loves fucking ancestry dot com. Like she's traced her own family roots and everything. Like so far, she like loves connecting people and being like, oh my gosh, I found out you two are fourth cousins. You should know each other. Like that's a dangerous game. Yeah, you find out about some dads that. <laughs> Didn't necessarily know that they were dads <laughs> when you play that game. But so so they 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 had these letters that um, a family member of Chelsea had like lived next to this woman. And when this woman died, her family just like threw out all her stuff mostly. And so he picked up these letters out of like the dumpster. And oh, my he God. Was like, these are really old letters. And so then he gave it to Chelsea's grandparents and. And they did old-fashioned stalking, like 
death records. Yeah. Um, you know, um, lists of who worked where. Yes, yes, yes. Like uh, all kinds of stuff to figure out that these were uh, lesbian love letters from the 1800s. No fucking way. Yeah. Isn't that oh crazy? Oh my God. Yeah. We have to see them. I'm, we have to do a reading. I would love to see them. Ch uh, Chelsea was like, it was insane to e just be holding paper from the 1800s. Usually you only see that stuff behind glass in museums. Yeah. You know, or in PDFs on the internet. And she was like, I was just like holding these love letters from like hundreds of years How ago. How graphic are we talking here? <laughs> uh, Not graphic, but cl very clearly. N we're, not, we're not dancing around the fact that we are in love with each other. Wow. I love that. Yeah. It also makes me want to cry. Yeah. It was, I mean, you, you think all of the time about, you know, how, how our, our community has been erased over time. And that was just another little tiny thing where this family came to clean out whoever's letters and was like, let's throw out this fucking stupid gay shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, versus if someone in that family had been queer and saw them and was, and was like, oh my God, like this, this is worth something. Yeah. I think about whether or not my dad was gay all the time. Yeah. Like, or bi or something. Yeah. Or like anyone in his family. Yeah. Everyone on my mom's side is gay. I just, I just assume. <laughs> um, but there's so many gay women on my mom's side of the family. Yeah. But that's crazy that's so cool so cool we should do a live reading i i really feel like we should i really want to see them they're far away the letters well how so. do we get them i don't know where we'll are they out. don't solve okay all right we'll have ray go get them yeah <laughs> do you mind picking up some lesbian lo love letters i will i will travel far <laughs> to find those letters <laughs> well right i'm assuming you're done yes that's it oh, that was that's, great that's my case what a, what a great that's awesome story Ray, thank you so much for doing this and, and for taking the extra time for us to get the audio right because I just knew I was like, I'm not fucking up this episode. We have to have <laughs> clean audio from Ray. Um, where can people find you? And We did it, Joe. We did it. Where can people find you and what are you working on that you want people to know about? On Instagram at ray.williams. And then I'm currently working on trying to get something fun together for Pride Month with Austin Pride. Oh, nice. well, hit us up. I will definitely. We're we're around. Hell yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah, we would love to. I'm I'm just volunteering us. <laughs> I'm fully like she's got she's got like a fortune famester <laughs> booked, and I'm like we would like to. Um, well, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, I think that's it, right? Anything yeah. you want to plug? Yeah, uh, in Instagram and Twitter at the Kate Sisk, uh, KateSisk.com for my mailing and text list, and uh, yeah. Uh, if this comes out after May 26th with the Lucas Spectacular Union Hall, hopefully there will be another one in June. So yeah. keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. And go to them. Yes, please. <laughs> All right. We're done. Thanks for listening, guys. One more shout out for my tour dates and the Patreon, patreon.com slash WHES. Even a dollar helps so much. Please, the ads are not enough. I know I sound crazy doing this, but I try to give you guys a ton in return. And a lot of people say it is the best uh, value that they've had on any Patreon. I do a lot of stuff on there. Um, let's pay Alex. And, and we're expanding the team. Uh, so that really, really helps. And uh, Gay Thought. I did some crowd work recently with someone in the audience who had just come out. And she was talking a lot about not knowing that she was gay because she wasn't sure if she one is gay or wanted to be the person that she was looking at she was looking at these women and she's like do I want to have sex with her or do I want to be her and that is something that I think is just classically the queer femme experience that I've never had I just think only women could be repressed in such a way that they could look at a pair of tits and think man I wish I had those like that is such a uniquely queer femme experience uh, look, write in explain this to me i've never i never really had that because i just saw boobies and thought that i want them on my face not on my body i had my own <laughs> these are becoming wildly unhinged because we film a few of them in a day and i run out of gay thoughts but yeah i just i love that part of the queer femme experience i think it's fascinating and just such a testament to how much women are objectified that we confuse loving ourselves and our bodies and who we are as women 
with desiring another woman. That's cr- that is a crazy intersectional place to be. And I just think it's it's really fascinating. Anyway, that's my gay thought from today. Have a great week, guys.